struggles and how he has overcome those struggles and used them as motivation to continue to serve. We heard from General Colin Powell, uh, another former Republican administration official endorsing uh, Joe Biden and the party's faithful, President Carter and Clinton spoke along with some new faces, Stacey Abrams and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the uh, representative from New York. There were lots of rebukes of President Trump, of his record, of his character, and others looking forward to the party's future. Biden saying he's looking forward to the next. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all. It means the world to me and my family. And I'll see you on Thursday. So Thursday is his big day. We've seen Joe Biden pop in and out of this convention over the first two days. We'll see that again today uh, when he speaks to the convention's Black Caucus, the Hispanic Caucus, and a couple of other events planned throughout the day. Back to you. ahead, Tracy. Thank you. President Trump is offering up his own counter-programming to the DNC. He visited a pair of battleground states, starting in Iowa, where he offered federal support to help rebuild after a massive windstorm last week. The president later toured the border wall in Arizona and hammered Biden's immigration policy at a mini-rally. Biden's plan is the most radical, extreme, reckless, dangerous, and deadly immigration plan ever put forward by a major party candidate. Next stop on Mr. Trump's tour across battleground states is Pennsylvania tomorrow, the same day Biden is delivering his speech at the DNC. A bipartisan Senate panel just released a massive report on the 2016 election that says members of the Trump campaign were eager to accept help from Russia. And some of that help was personally directed by Vladimir Putin. We're joined now by NBC's Pete Williams. And Pete, what else is in the report? This is a bipartisan report from the Senate Intelligence Committee, endorsed by Republicans, too, giving it extra weight. Like the Mueller report, it finds no evidence of a coordinated conspiracy with Russia. But on Paul Manafort, the former Trump campaign co-chairman, it goes further than the Mueller report, saying he was in close touch with a Russian intelligence officer who became a business partner. It says Manafort posed a grave counterintelligence threat. Connected to Russia's hacking and leaking of Hillary Clinton campaign emails, an operation it says was actually directed by Russian President Putin. As for the notion promoted by President Trump that it was the government of Ukraine that tried to meddle in the election, not Russia, the report says that idea originated in Russia as propaganda. that it left itself open during the transition to Russian manipulation. All right, Pete, thank you. There are new developments in the battle over the post office. After a lot of uproar and even protests outside his home, the postmaster general says that there will be no more cost-cutting changes until after the election. But there are still a lot of questions about the changes that have already happened at post offices across the country. NBC's Peter Alexander has this report. Facing fierce scrutiny over mail delays, Postmaster General Lewis DeJoy announcing the Postal Service is suspending operational changes until after the November election to, quote, avoid even the appearance of any impact on election mail. The abrupt move following accusations that Trump administration was intentionally trying to undermine an expected surge in mail-in voting during the pandemic. They're afraid of the voter. They're afraid of the American people. Why? Because people are on to them. The controversial cost-cutting initiatives, including the removal of sorting machines and the slashing of overtime, have been blamed for significant lags in mail service. This photo provided to NBC News by a postal employee shows packages the employee says have been sitting in a distribution center in New York for nine days. DeJoy, a Trump ally and Republican fundraiser, now says mail processing equipment and collection boxes will remain where they are. No facilities will be closed, and overtime hours will continue to be approved as needed. Still, it's unclear what it means for changes that have already been made, and whether equipment that's been removed will be restored. The announcement comes as DeJoy has agreed to testify at a pair of emergency hearings before a Republican-led Senate committee this Friday and a Democratic-controlled House panel Monday. We need to get him under oath. 
on a committee letting us know what is happening, and we have to undo the damage that he has already done. Ahead of visits to Iowa and Arizona, President Trump again attacked universal mail-in voting, <laughs> where some states proactively send mail-in ballots to all voters. For the first time, he's suggesting there may need to be a presidential election do-over, which cannot happen. Universal is going to be a disaster, the likes of which our country has never seen. It'll end up being a rigged election, or they will never come out with an outcome. They'll have to do it again. And nobody wants that, and I don't want that. This morning, DeJoy says the Postal Service is ready to handle all the election mail it gets this fall. Still, Nancy Pelosi is not satisfied with today's move, calling it, quote, an insufficient first step in ending the president's election sabotage campaign. Francis? Peter, thanks. Massive wildfires are still burning up and down the state of California. The Lake Fire near Los Angeles is at about 40% containment after nearly a week. It spread to more than 20,000 acres and a dozen structures have been destroyed. And in Northern California, evacuations have been ordered for parts of Napa and Sonoma counties. There are three large fires burning in that area. All right, NBC meteorologist Janessa Webb is watching a whole lot when it comes to that heat and also the tropics. Let's check in with her. Janessa, good morning. Hey, good morning, you too. Good morning, everyone. The heat, it just won't back off the Pacific Northwest and now moving into the Southwest this afternoon. Now, some hope is we're seeing a little bit of circulation that's providing some moisture for the upper Midwest and parts of the Pacific Northwest, but still, it's very dry. The humidity is down and winds are even going to continue to pick up throughout the afternoon. We'll continue to watch these fire watches and red flag warnings. That's a look at the big weather story of the day. Here's a closer look at your day ahead. So our temperatures continue for the Rockies to be in the upper 90s, near 100 degrees this afternoon. We're also watching a few storms, tornadoes touching down across central Florida, and we'll continue to see that throughout the afternoon. And then the tropics, they're heating up. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Janessa, thank you so much for that. Well, Major League Baseball, they have suspended a Texas Rangers pitcher and its manager after some controversy about baseball's unwritten rules. Uh, the Padres' Fernando Tatis Jr., he crushed his Grand Slam late in their game on Monday with his team up by seven. Uh, the Rangers didn't like it, so they threw the next pitch right behind Manny Machado. The pitcher now, Ian Jabot, is out for three games, and his manager, Chris Woodward, is out for one game. In Tuesday's game, Tatis Jr. ended up stealing third base when the team was up by six. The Major League Baseball yeah. players, they should be able to have a The unwritten rule is just so ridiculous. Big boy game. Point. Yep. All right. won't be here physically on campus today because we are talking about a 100% virtual start. And I did get the chance to speak with the superintendent, and he tells me that tech teams have been very busy over the past... Six thirty-six. back to school for tens of thousands of children across the area. Eight... Americans say that they'll get a coronavirus vaccine when we have one. That's according to a new NBC News poll. 44% of American adults say they'll get the vaccine. 32% say they're not sure. And 22% say they won't get it at all. Dr. Richard Besser joins me now. Dr. Besser is the former acting CDC director and the president and CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And we are always thrilled to have him on the show. Uh, Dr. Besser, according to that poll, just 44% of Americans are sure they will get the vaccine. How concerning is that stat to you? And, and what kind of numbers would you ideally like to see here? 